Hello there and welcome to Road to Tunis. You're looking at one of the best Common Heroes players in the world. Many people's de facto number one Master League seed. It's Orange Pest playing as the United States Forces. And he's up against somebody that is vying to be the best in the world. It's Jibber Jabber Jobber's badass Deutsche Afrika Corps from the southeast. He plays from the Netherlands. And I'm A. I'm here today with a brand new casting partner. It's Vulcan HD Gaming. How are you doing there, Vulcan? Hello, A. Again, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to this US DAC matchup. Very nice. Yeah, it should be really good, to be honest. Uh, these two players are definitely top five. You'll be very happy to hear this time, Vulcan. And you're not happy to hear, though, this time. We do have Pathfinder. This is post nerf. Yet, players such as Orange Pest are still thinking to nerf them all you like. I still think they're OP. I don't care what you say. Yeah, so the two common strategies with US right now are Pathfinders or you go like scouts into uh, rifles and then just go infantry as section leader and then rifle spam it up. But up against DAC, that can be a little bit risky because of all of the armoured cars. So. Nice crowd shoots and capping that fuel early on. Yeah, not too bad. He's got a decent amount of fuel and he's also got the fuel in the north. So Berzglieri with the uh, Panzer Pioneer and crowd shoots and actually winning against the, the Pathfinder spam at the moment. And there's a fifth one coming out. So uh, Orange Pest, he basically has been the most influential player in Company Heroes 3 meta by a country mile. And right now, he's just doubling down. He's saying, I don't care if no one else is playing Pathfinders, I still think they're wantonly overpowered. So let's see uh, if he can recapture the entirety of this map. The thing is with Pathfinders, they have some fantastic range DPS. So they're able to really chunk. You can see the Panzer Pioneer there taking a ton of damage yeah. at maximum range. And if you double down on these squads and you have two versus one engagements, you can basically leapfrog them away from the enemy and, and just chip them from miles away. Dude, did you check that game sense by Orange Pest? He was waiting for the Berzglieri to come to the plus 10 fuel. He just knew it. He's a very, very on it player at the moment. And he's a little bit annoyed with himself for not taking ML1 seriously enough. And uh, having lost to Ray and then Kauzak... Uh, yeah, he, he it hurt him, to be honest. He wishes oh, he had to... Yeah. Sorry, this unit on the cutoff is uh, very exposed right now. Surrounded by three units of Pathfinders. That could easily be four once this bot cap is done. So he's got to be careful. He's getting a little bit closer than I would have thought he would, but I guess he just wanted to get at least one onto the cap to stop the cutoff getting capped altogether. But those will get away. Hands yeah. squad with a nice brown skin. Wow. Or is it grey skin? The grey skin for them, yeah. Is that, is that one of the bought DLC skins? No, that's the merit ones you get from the challenge. Wow. So he could have done something like build tank traps or um, exclamation mark description to get this. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the engineers on the top side here actually in a really tough spot. He's trying to finish off the cap on that Muni, but he is going to have to let it go as the DPS comes in from the, the Pathfinders forces them off. Point. Yeah, and they're going to follow. They're an absolute nightmare, the Pathfinders, and they indeed are going to punish him on the retreat. They just pursued him, basically. Yeah, the best thing about them is they they provide their own max range engagement with their own line of sight, so they can just chip from miles away. And these Panzergrands, they're okay, but they need to get closer. If they can get close to these Pathfinders, then they will do a lot of damage. I've just realised something. I, I'm sorry to interrupt our incredibly serious uh, casting, but uh, Switzerland's right with his kill 17 Ketans with 117 Panzer. I do believe that is an actual challenge. But Vulcan, I figured out how they designed the challenges. Without any coordination, they said everybody write a challenge down on a piece of paper and put it in the bag. <laughs> so there's no there's no consistency with how hard they are. Is that legitimate? <laughs> yeah. is that legitimate? And somebody just like troll through in the cannon grad one. Well, they need, none of them knew how hard they'd be or how easy they'd be as the M16 hits and punishes his Panzer Grenadier. We've also got pa um, paratroopers dropping down as well. But yeah, I, I think I, we finally figured out how the challenges got uh, designed. Everybody in the company just put one on a piece of paper and put it in a bag. Jibber in this game is under a lot of pressure right now. There is so many units already on the field 
Like this Pathfinder spam gives him so much map control. And now he's got an airborne squad as well. He's gonna probably give them Zooks ready yes. for any DAC armor. And this M16 in the meanwhile can just tear through the DAC infantry because he, he got the timing perfect on it. Absolute perfect timing. But one thing that will be very different from the series we've watched so far today, Vulcan, Jibber is not a slouch when it comes to strategies and counters and timing. He knows this game very well. He's taken Co3 very seriously, has a very positive attitude to it, despite its uh, very early state. And, um, yeah, he'll expect him to come up with something that should break out of this death lock, this strangulation position. Yeah, the difficulty is a positive attitude doesn't give you resources. No. And he is getting all of his resources taken away from him. This cutoff is being taken as well, which will remove the extra munitions on the top side. The bot side will be covered off by an airborne unit as well as the crab shoots and try and take the fuel. So uh, there's even more map control coming in as more and more infantry land on this map. There we go, and he's dropping paratroopers on top yep. of the Kratzschitz, and due to the Geneva Convention, he's not allowed to shoot whilst they're still in the falling animation. It was, uh... that's, not a, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a myth. <laughs> oh no, I, I was... was that, does, do act people actually think that's a thing? Uh, yes, yes oh, they do. Do they? I was joking, I didn't know people actually thought that was a thing, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those myths that... If, if, if it's like a pilot, then yeah. But if it's like a combat troop, like a paratrooper, then no. Oh, really? I didn't know that yeah. was up for debate. I just thought everybody shot paratroopers when they're falling in World War II. Look, look at Crete. I yeah. think the Australians yeah, were like... <laughs> yeah, let's just wait for them to land and, re and organize themselves. Before uh, I, think, I think we should wait for them to land. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Well, we've already got one Bazooka squad airborne. We're probably going to have a second soon, which is going to be able to deal with this 8-rad, I would expect. Although he can definitely find any of these Pathfinder squads that are left on their own. Yeah, they've got a little bit of low health as well. Great. No engine noise on the 8-rad. This is... It's a stealth 8-rad! That's so mysterious. It glided across the desert there. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I mean, destroy all that cover on the top side. Yeah. That's going to, to be honest, make the Pathfinders less likely to be able to hold the line after they've capped the fuel. But meanwhile, here come the paratroopers with those bazookas. Oh! Devastating the 8 rad, pushing it back. Will they get another salvo off? They're reloading. They won't get it off. Way too far away, but nice damage done for sure. Loads of pressure put on. This airborne unit, if it's pushing towards the cutoff now, might actually find the 8 rad for another couple shots on target. The M16 here seems to be baiting pretty hard because I don't think he's seen the second Zooka squad yet. Maybe he has. Yeah, he needs to be really, really careful advancing into these Zookas. Oh dear. That's dangerous. He was distracting with the close. Panzer Grenadiers for the time being. These are the kind of players that can play around with the time to turn and aim. They do have that level of uh, connection to European servers, which does help, and also uh, experience and skill. I'm not suggesting he was doing that. I'm just... Yeah, Vulcan, when the top attack. 10 play, it can be really, really exciting. I'll just uh, just say that. Oh. <sighs> Jibber needs to get his act together because he's already down to 250 points <laughs> in this game, nine minutes in, and uh, the map control is not looking much better no. as he's losing his bot side munitions right there. That's pretty rough. Yeah, now the really M16 is. coming in for the top to kill the Basiglietti on that point as well, when the 8-rad's not in position to stop him. And there's no Panzerjägers on the map yet, so yeah, this is really, really rough. Really, really rough for Jibba. It certainly is, and that flares she currently showing Orange Pest everything he needs to know about Jibba's positioning. Look at the Pathfinders branch out. Yeah, like him. Those flares only lasting 15 seconds now. Fair not enough. as good as they used to be, but... Still pretty good information. And yeah, I'm really surprised we didn't see the Panzer here. Oh, Bazooka's find the 8-round of the side hit there. It's going to get out of there just about, however. Let's see what Jib is thinking here. So again, he's gone for Italian combined arms left side. We've seen that in every DAC game today. And um, yeah, he's uh, quite a high amount of manpower. And he's clearly uh, weighing up his next options. He's got fuel in the bag. Where's he going to go from here? We'll have to wait and see. 
So if he's not going to go Pantyaka, then getting some Martyrs out early would be fine. But he hasn't decided to do either just yet. Um, he is managing to force off some of the Pathfinders, and the M16's trying to run away from the 8 Rad as it reverses towards it. Dangerous the 8 Rad stuff. going almost as fast backwards as it does forwards. Ooh, first squad white potential here for one of these Pathfinders. The Blight could be coming to an end. Five could become four. Will it survive? It's a light cover crater. It's very dead. It's like popping a blister. So <laughs> quickly. <laughs> those Pathfinders, if they get caught out in the wrong positions by those, there is curtains for sure. Um, it ran really, really strong in that position. Is that a second eight red coming out? I believe it is, good sir. Okay, well, he's doubled down on the 8 rads. Looks like that's going to be the play. Uh, he can certainly run down Airborne, and if he kills this Airborne squad, that would be huge. He can actually commit onto this, because the second Airborne unit is not in position. I've oh, he's smoking on retreat, but it's already dead. Thanks to the Modelo 30s there. Getting in, but the 8 rads want the M16 next. Jib is firing back with aggression here. Yeah, the big problem is just not having the two Zook squads together. This is this is one thing you cannot do against that because they will split you and they will kill you. And the, killing the M16 is a huge win for Jibba in coming back in this game. He has all three of the VPs capped and he is capping back the rest of the map. This crowd shoots and actually coming up really clutch this game as well. Mm, yeah, it's, it's a really, really clutch push from Jibba. They straight back into this now. Commander, with the uh, the eight the rads, and we are going to be getting, that's right. It's what we hoped um, that Hulk Smash would do early. It's gone straight for Tank Depot and gone for Sherman. And I'm sure that, yes, indeed, he's got the mechanized support center giving him access to many Sherman upgrades. Yeah, so he'll probably still get the 76 upgrade. It's still really, really strong, uh, even after it had its HE nerfed against infantry. Going to be flushing those Basiglietti out nicely. Gives him a good position in the centre of the map. But Joe will just want to get that VP under control. Because he can, if he can get Jibber below 100 points, he really starts to put the pressure on. But Marda now coming out as the counter to the Sherman. Uh, Marda, or the French call it Merde. That is a, actually a French tank, so that joke doesn't work. But regardless, this little tank destroyer is on the field and it has the turning circle of a ballerina. It's able to do things a tank destroyer simply shouldn't do. You really confuse me calling it a French tank. I'm not sure it is. Is it's it? A, is it not? J Armada 3 is a Zis 3 from Russia put yeah. on a Panzer 38T hull from. Ah, Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Boom, there you go. France, Czechoslovakia, kind of the same country. Defend our victory point. <laughs> so glad we've got good teamwork and synergy where we cover for each other. So already. <laughs> well, this Sherman's got a lot of work to do. It's kind of late, to be honest. Um, and with the M16 going down and one of the Airborne's dead, it's kind of unsupported. It really needs both Zooks squads to play well. Otherwise, it's just going to get run down by Marders. Fair enough. Meanwhile, you can this... see the building. You look, just look on the map. Like there's a swarm of DAC vehicles running around all over the place. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, do, you, do you know why they call it an eight rad? Do you know how many wheels it's got? Uh... Vulcan. Sorry. Do you know why they call it an eight rad? Do you know how many wheels it's got? I don't know. I don't know it as the eight rad. I know it as the SBW two three one. But how many wheels has it got? Just answer the question. It's got. 16. <laughs> Wait, what? No, I'm so confused. It's got eight wheels. <laughs> no, the 8 rad, how many wheel wheels has it got? Oh, you didn't fall for it. Yeah, it's got nine wheels, one on the back. Damn it. You're trying to be too clever there. You're trying to be too we've clever. Got six, we've got 16 on the map, okay? Because okay. there's two of them. Oh, now you're talking. Okay. <laughs> right. Why are people doubting me all the time? <laughs> it's clearly a strategy game, right? I ask a simple question, <laughs> like, ah, I need to develop the counter before the question's even finished, okay? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Technically, there would be 18 on the map. Right, paradrop reinf okay. para reinforcements between 11 and 15 you get now. And uh... Isn't this really bad? Did Orange Pest play on the new patch? Yes, he will have done. He'll be very aware of just how inverted commas allegedly bad it is. And uh, he clearly doesn't think it's that bad. 
But uh, I'm saying, I, based on everybody in the community stopping playing, I'm just an Orange Pest fanboy, basically, is what I'm trying to intimate there. Um, he, he just still thinks it's incredibly good, probably. We'll have to wait so and see. So it looks like one of, the, one of the Pathfinders picked up the bazooka that the uh, Airborne dropped. Um, so he has that, but uh, it's going to be under threat as both the Basiglietti and the Panzergrenz come at it. The Panzergrenz ended up picking up a Breda, I would assume. Or did they get given the uh, the MG34? Don't know. They just they can upgrade it apparently. <laughs> there you go. I wasn't aware of that either, but apparently they can. The Panzer guns can get oh, okay. Uh, they that, can, they that can one, just upgrade one. it, yeah. They so when can, the when the uh, when the Basiglietti can get it, they they can get it too, it? yeah. It's do you know why that is because we've all been playing Panzer Pioneers, and uh, that's yeah, that's what's been happening. Here we go. We've got the Pathfinders being forced off. They could be absolutely devastated on retreat here. There's two squads oh, either side. Gun. AT guns clutch on the Marders there, but Panzer, pa the Pathfinders go down. The Sherman is trying to fight back against the uh, Basiglietti here. Look at the blob there of infantry. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Bloody hell. That was a lot. That was everything he's got in one, uh, one collection of pixels there. Square foot of space with 30 men inside it. So we see double 8 rad, double Marder. And those Marders looking for the snipe on the Sherman right now, not going to find it. An AT gun actually covering really well. So Orange Pest getting himself out of a bit of a sticky situation there by getting the AT gun in just in time. Pathfinders with the uh, the bazooka trying to push in. Oh, he's found Ooh. the side armor of the Sherman there, but he himself is taken out by the M1. Two Marders become one. Yeah, this is bad news. Really bad news now. These Shermans can get super aggressive onto the Marder if they want to. And uh, if they kill that off and there's not another one being built, it's going to be really, really bad. Yeah, he's held the line though there. There's only three Pathfinders left and he's been able to keep his map control. Meanwhile, the Kratschutzen, who by the way is still alive, we may have forgotten about him, the Sherman, is chasing shadows because he's too slippery. Um, yeah, he's still helping the map control. There you go. This Kratschitzen has been capping that bot Enemy fuel for the entire game. <laughs> that must be so annoying for Orange Pest in this game. But the design of this map means the victory points are a little bit closer to the center, and the Kratschitzen's not been going for them instead. So you can see that, of course, Orange Pest does have a really decent victory point count over Jibber. Yeah, so he needs to get his. Vehicles fixed up, although not necessarily if they fix themselves. He does have the auto repair upgrade now. Um, so he needs to stay stationary now. Uh, that is something that they changed in the latest update again. So Dak can't just run around um, repairing on the move. They have to stand still with their vehicles to repair. So you'll see a lot of stationary units out of Dak, which will look a bit weird, but that'll be why. Can I just say how absolutely clutch these mines are? It needs to get away from them and not give away that they've been planted. But there's two mines in a really clever position. They're either side of the uh, pathing blocking munitions point. The mod is in operation around there. He could tempt him in and cause some really big problems for the Shermans. Follow up with the mod and possibly kill. I, I can't describe how clutch those mines could end up being. Yeah, we have the double apron on the top side absolutely chunking infantry. <laughs> forcing them off those points, keeping control wherever the Shermans are not. And this is pretty much uh, what you were talking about with Humber uh, the other day, or the other match. Um, he's going to want to keep using these eight rads to kind of cover his flanks whenever the Shermans are not near. So now he's just going to move into the bottom side as the Shermans move to the top side, and the Marders basically want to do the opposite. I know Vector's only trying to be funny when he says I'm shoutcasting plates stuck in the ground. All veteran uh, Company Heroes fans know exactly what I mean when I describe these mines could be incredibly clutch. They just look well positioned. What's Wait, your is brains? That an M13? It is. Oh, interesting. We must pull Very interesting. Back. Still good. Uh, we are going to try yeah. and see what upgrades he has, by the way, Jibber. Let's go and see. We can't see, unfortunately. The, the player we have is the one we're stuck with. So Orange Pest, we can see his upgrades, but we can't see Jibber's. He has the improvised armor, and he has the, uh, the 76 mil conversion for the Shermans. Oh, he's tempting him in with a bit of bait here. A bit of 8-rad-sized bait. He's got the Caro Amato, the M6... 
1340s, rather. I think the car has got spotted by the infantry in the middle, so he's not going to be chasing that in just yet. He has got those two Shermans advancing in that direction. There is still the Marder available. If the Marder covers the M13 push, that could be absolutely crazy. Also, Sniper? Yep, Sniper. <laughs> it's already gotten two infantry kills in the north. And here he goes. He's using the reinforcements yet again, keeping all of this infantry viable during the battle. Marder's in its position, ready to use the mines to counter-strike. Oh, the Sniper's dead, by the way. Just got literally annihilated just there. <laughs> Yeah, it just got wiped out very, very quickly. Oh, big hit there onto the Sherman as well. I assume that was from the Marder on the bottom side. And, uh, yeah, a lot of this infantry getting forced off regardless of the uh, <laughs> reinforce. Imagine if you could reinforce the dead sniper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's sniper grenading here. them as they're That's what falling. we need. Oh, one carrier goes to the north side of these Shermans, but he's going to get out DPS there. Needs to be careful. This is not good. Does he? I assume he doesn't have the tungsten upgrade because that doesn't seem like a lot of damage right now. No, it doesn't. Oh, how little health is that he has? He's got five HP remaining, Ooh. everybody. Five HP. If the Sherman misses, it'll be hilarious. Oh, he's going to get away with five HP. The other one saves the day. The little pizza tank that could survive. Now that one's going to die too. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be able to do enough DPS in time. Yeah, he's got to be really careful. No, oh, he's just a genius. And meanwhile, by the way, the 8 rads and the Marder have pushed in on all of this in the centre. He's wiped the M1. Oh, jibber! The ball's on the Dutchman there. Incredible stuff. Yeah, that's pretty clutch, to be honest, in managing to get away with that. But the Panzergren squad, will that get away? Oh, yes, it will. <laughs> it's a lucky SOB. Because the Sherman misses as well. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, this is a really tilting game for Orange Pass. Yeah. Right click properties, right click, uh, left click uninstall game. That's what Orange Pest wants to do right now, probably. Because that must be tilting. Absolutely tilt. Oh my god, he's got a boulder tank. These guys. Oh my. Protect themselves from the sun. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty clever, actually. Meanwhile, Sherman could go down here. Oh my god, his rear arm is exposed. Jibber with the genius plays. Nice finish with the Marder there, and the AT gun gets cleared by the M13s at the same time. Uh, the cutoff's being taken, the Kladjits and taking the munition point down there as well. There are so many vehicles on the map for Dak right now, and there's only more coming. Dude, this is just genius Dak play. This is how it's meant to be played, they're a hit and run faction. And big credit to uh, Relic and, and the the gameplay leads in the design because when this stuff gets balanced properly it's gonna be like crack to play it's gonna be so much fun because you can see the hit and run tactics fully fully being utilized here by jibber this was actually a huge comeback um considering how much map control he relinquished early on to the american player he made such a clutch play killing like the m16 and it just completely turned the game around um, and, it, and basically meant that the first Sherman was just unsupported for so long it gave him enough time, Jibber, enough time to get all of these carrier matters on, on the field. <laughs> and here we go, the swarm might just come and finish the job to be honest. He did just lose an infantry squad by the way, just to call that out. But his uh, tank army's ready to fight again so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, he's got bazookas, he's got an M1. Oh no. Killed that. AT gun. He just needs to decrew the next one and he can open the door. That Bisiglietti though. Get on, maybe a little bit over ambitious there. Vet 3, Panzergrenadier are also in peril. Uh, he's just repositioning the blob, the armada. Oh, and he's going in now. He's, he's gone around the side of the M1 AT gun there and just got some decent shots off. Will he escape? It's very likely he will. There you the go. Marder. The Marder got a really good hit on as well. So that Sherman just constantly ping-ponging its health backwards and forwards as it gets fixed up by the engineers over and over and over again. Oh, this is over. There's no way he can survive. It's just so nice just to be able to back off and just get free 
repairs. Like, look at the, look at everything just repairing for free. Though. It's just so gross. It's so gross. I'm fun. And now we got uh, another AT gun coming in. Oh, he's gonna. Oh, he decrewed him on him again. Oh, and the pathfinder's going down. Oh no, Orange Pest. That is unfortunate. He's getting he formed GG. right now. He does indeed. He taps out, calls GG. What an excellent comeback victory for Jibber there. That was a fantastic game. And uh, this is peak RTS gaming at its very finest. This isn't Steel Division. This isn't War Thunder. This isn't Total War. <laughs> Sorry, Vulcan. I'm just joking. <laughs> but it was a bit of fun, right? It was a good laugh. And, uh, and it was, that, was, that was a great game. It was a really good game. Good comeback. Well played, Jibber. Let's go over to uh, game two in a second. Yeah. I was just saying to Vulcan, I don't know how you guys, I actually like the arcadey nature of it. I like how BS the mm. abilities are. I don't want them to nerf everything. I just want them to balance it, if that makes sense. Because we've got so many realistic RTSs, not well, more authentic RTSs on the market. Like, I think Company Heroes can be like just the insane red-headed stepchild of the market. What do you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Them? I think it's, no, Poe's always been that. It's always been the arcade accessible World War Two game. It, that, that is what it is. Um, that's always been the case. Um, more authentic games like Star Division, like what I play, um, they're a lot less popular because they're a lot less accessible. Exactly. And that's where Co really, really wins out. And when, when they balance it, it's going to be a masterpiece probably. Probably. Um, and we'll be able to say that we were here through its darkest hours when it was first released. And as, as we all know these days, games aren't released in a finished state. That's not Shane on Relic Entertainment. That's just the market. That's just the, the industry, rather. Uh, but yeah, we're ready to cap. Uh, ready to do game um, two here. If mine and um, Dear Vulcan's casting isn't uh, as sprightly as it was earlier, this is our third series of the day. I have a cold. Uh, but we're doing our very best for you. I hope you're enjoying it. If you like Vulcan stuff, go check out um, him on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you for the shout out. Yep. I'm also probably going to be streaming after Co is yeah. done today. And we'll give him a, a juicy little uh, <coughs> host after this. But uh, we've already lost all the early people as well. We had 1,800 viewers last ML. And now we're at 600. <laughs> So that yes. early, <laughs> that's, we're just back to the same old guys. We're here, and uh, we'll be with Company Heroes whilst it slowly becomes a fantastic game. So yeah, we're still here. Don't worry about that. And maybe you'll get more in the final next weekend. It's very possible. It's very possible. Don't forget, Company Heroes two. It had a uh, three thousand um, co concurrent players um, by December of two thousand thirteen, uh, and then it grew by five thousand by the time it finished. Um, casts for the finals used to get about 2,000 on YouTube and then by 2018 they got 1 million so I'm not saying this will happen for Co3 but you don't have to uh, worry too much too much probably should be a bit worried but don't worry too much is what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> right. um, let me actually yeah I'll go as that player actually but I have to, probably have to um, so let me change who's who <laughs> now I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, code content hasn't really been doing that great in general for content creators. I, I look at a lot of content creators, a lot of people who were doing content on something else who tried to do Company Heroes content because of Company Heroes 3 coming out, like everyone thinking it's going to be hype, and then all of the Company Heroes 3 videos doing really poorly for them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been unfortunate. Just don't expect it to be a lasting trend, though. I don't think. I mean, coming here as content's always punched above its weight. I could probably make. The thing is, at the moment, I could probably get more views making a coming here as two video. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> uh, but things, as I say, it's just how games work these days. They release and they're not finished, and the hype like fizzles out mm. immediately. I started coming here as three by saying, "Yeah, nine out of ten gameplay. This is great." By the second week, I was like, "Huh, oh, more like seven out of ten. It's not finished." And now I'm probably close to a six. So there's my trajectory of hype. And I've now, like, I'm in normal land. But 
yeah, you just need more copium, dude. But I suppose you, yeah. you're you're not actually of this series, so it's you you can be more realistic with things. <laughs> I mean, I've been involved with the Company Heroes project since it basically begun, right? I've been. Mm. I think me and you were both involved almost from the start. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I was in Vancouver, Canada, in 2017. Sat around a table when they were like, "What do you want Company Heroes Three to be?" I was like, "Bloody hell." <laughs> 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 nice. I wasn't that early. <laughs> Got some Polish trolls. I know exactly who it is trying to pretend they are aligned with Dirty Finisher there. You're not as clever as you think you are, guys. But anyway, um Yeah. Yeah. I, I just I don't expect Camera 3 to go away anytime soon, but that's because I live through the Co2 no. thing. Maybe the Co2 thing doesn't repeat itself where it has a dodgy release and it slowly gathers pace and becomes a really classic RTS. You know. I think I think there are enough developers at Relic who are passionate enough to make Camera Heroes 3 work. Yeah. I, I do trust that. Uh, so we make some moderators. I got Momo for shows a mod. Zany. Uh, I'll do. How did your games go today, Momo? I'm very eager to see, actually. Um, probably should just go check that out now. Oh, he came up against Nagano. That's unfortunate. <laughs> That's certainly a drop. And then he's a sloth versus sloth! <laughs> it's good. Oh, it's good replay sizes. Fair enough, Momo. I might cast that tomorrow, then, if you... Gave Nagano a fantastic game. Might be worth a look at that. Definitely. But um, was that our second game or our first game of this series? Sorry for being a bit ahead. It was the first game. Okay, let's get on with it then. Let's get on with it. Um, Okie dokie. Momo, of course, a fantastic bastion of the Company Heroes competitive scene. Since around 2014-15. It's been plugging away. Alright. Vulcan, you, you, you they got up popped their my copium bubble, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I, I, have I, was, a... I was being hopeful. No, you, you you popped it. I have like this force field of pretend hype for Company Heroes, and you popped it. <laughs> I'm questioning my life now. I mean, I mean in what terms am I doing? Of, of analytics of numbers, it's down massively, right? But Yeah, um... well, nobody cares. I don't... I don't want to hit a reality. Uh, but there's hope on the horizon. <laughs> we just need to get to episode four, guys. It's fine. Okay, okay, right. Let's go over to the game. We need a new hope. I think I've already done this once. Oh. They started the Star Wars uh, episode one rather than episode four, right? Uh, oh, yes, so they did. Yes. That's what I was going for. Was just making sure you clicked. Good. I'm trying to multitask, as the <laughs> Americans would say. <laughs> <laughs> right, there we go. I'm ready. Hello there, and welcome to... This is Orange Pest's Deutsch Afrika Corps. It's the highest ELO faction in Company of Heroes 3. He had a monstrous win streak. I think it might still be active, to be honest. And he's 1-0 down against the gibberist of Jabba Jobbers in the north. As the USF, so they're doing a faction reversal. Uh, Vulcan, what do you want to see this game? Well, we'll see if uh, Orange Pest can, can get those eight rads out early on and, and really shut down the rifles that are apparently zooming out of Jibber right now. He's going for the double rifle early strat, and he's probably going to bring out the infantry leader. So this is basically the second strategy that we saw that differs from the first one. The Pathfinder into M16 rush is the is the first one we saw, and now we're going to see the rifle into infantry leader strat. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, let's see if that works. It's a bit of a wide open map, and it does seem to be the Deutsch Afrika core map of choice. So I believe Jeb has got his work cut out for him. But he had his work cut out for him in the first 20 minutes of that previous game. And he was able to launch a fantastic counter-attack. 
Uh, this time, entirely different faction dynamics, so let's see what he can do. Do we have a choice for Orange Pest yet? No, we don't. Both players not choosing their commanders. Of course, not wanting to reveal their hand quite yet, because you can see the commanders currently in the, um, the pause menu, which is uh, an odd position to be in. Yeah, really, really interesting movements here from Chibarelion. He went for the bot side cap and prevented Orange there. Pest from doing what he did to him. We have rifle so, in, like, previous game we saw Orange Pest capture, or sorry, Jibber capture the bot side fuel with the Crouchardson. And this time around, Jibber didn't let Orange Pest do it to him, which was actually really, really clutch. This, nice. uh, this Pathfind, this Scout Squad, sorry, my bad, is doing a very... Um, clutch thing right now. He's retreating back to base to cap the north side of the map more quickly. Because, of course, you run a lot faster when you're retreating. So, uh, pretty clever there from the scout squad to go and cap that munitions on the north side of his base. Yeah, these rifles against Dak early on, they trade really well. So, what Jibber is doing right now is he's spreading his rifles across the map and every engagement he's going to win for like the first five minutes of this game. Yeah, and he's, here it comes, he converges on the Panzer Grenadiers, and they're going to have to nope out of this situation imminently. It's just really, really rough when you're relying on Panzer Grenadiers and you don't have the Basiglia Eddie out early, no. uh, which is usually what you'd see, and obviously with zero CP you can get the Basiglia Eddie, so it looks like he's not going to be going for that strategy. And those Panzergrens losing three models is a pretty big manpower drain early on. Yeah, and this is a very important engagement over here as well. We've got rifles versus Panzergrenadiers. Uh, because basically, Orange Pest is going to have no fuel at this rate. Yeah, Jibber really, really putting the pain on right now. Although the Panzer Pioneers getting their flame up does allow them to win those engagements for sure. Yeah, so the Panzer Pioneers at max range will win. And then if the rifles try and close, the flamethrower certainly helping out a lot there. Certainly is. The 2v1. The there it is. There's the captain and his retinue, as uh, Vulcan predicted. It's pouring onto the map. And an extra infantry squad just to add to Orange Pest's woes. But he's, he's gone for the Assault Grenadier just to give him some blunt force um, close quarter combat capability. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get half-tracked here, because he could still get half-tracked. Like, a half-track comes in, and yeah, <laughs> and then he converts <laughs> it manually into the M16, and you still have that problem. Yeah, he's got the quad mount coming already. So it's going to be a very similar timing, if not faster, to than Orange Pest was last game. So, um, And now he's committed to the uh, Assault Grens rather than the uh, Panzergers. It's going to be really difficult to deal with. It certainly is. Panzer Grenadier, get into the Casbah. As soon as that quad mount comes up, they are not going to want to be there for much longer. <laughs> no, they're not. There it is. Look at this crash shuts and we could capture its death live on screen. The scout's going to needing one shot through the front to finish it. So low health remaining, 20 out of 200 HP there. It also looks like he's gone for is that the armoured group? And then he's got the free vet. That's it. Yeah, he's, he's got, got veterancy one out of the gate. Yeah, Not that so... the uh, M16 has that many good capabilities. I mean, it doesn't seem to be that viable. Oh, no. Shoot and scoot. Sorry, it's changes. Order the vehicle to move at maximum speed. My bad. And button vehicle. I wonder if that's uh, just as broken as the Flak uh, 30s is. Still going to tear through infantry regardless. <laughs> and uh, those Panzergrens are not going to be having a fun time on that top side. The, the, the crazy thing about the M16 is it actually has a brutal range. And if you use like infantry in front of it, it can fire miles away. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous. And it still maintains brilliant DPS. The top pioneers forcing off the captain. Yeah, they're doing a good job, and they're followed up by Panzer Pioneers with the flamethrower. Rifleman, back. gonna have to go back to base. Do we have healing? Yes, we do. Medical station, getting free manpower from the field as we've got the Jaeger assault group on the pushed on from Orange Pest as well. He seems to stabilise. Would you say, Vulcan? For now. As soon as that, that captain starts meeting up with the rifles, a lot of these infantry squads are going to be hurting. Although that scout squad 
don't let that go down for free, although the M16 absolutely carving, and that's just showing the power of it early on. Fine margins utilised by the players there. The model health on the scout squad, one man as he was, was high enough to keep the cutoff from being neutralised, and that's the level of players we're seeing right now. Two Master League veterans from the Co2 era strutting their stuff in this brand new game. So, unfortunately, Orange Pest showed the Panziegers without them really doing anything. So, now he knows it's coming, and he's going to play a lot more careful with his M16. So, we'll probably see more focus on the infantry again with the rifles. We might even see nade upgrades so he can deal with uh, vehicles as well a lot easier, get, get the snares off and stuff like that. And this actually needs to be really careful. <laughs> Because the rifles can destroy that half track if it doesn't have health upgrades. No. Crush us and being a nuisance. That's our Panzer Grenadier half track. Fast deploy. You can produce vehicles 50% faster thanks to the raid 101st Airborne in chat all the way from Korea. Or a Master League oh. Korean caster. Do we already have Tech 4 as US? Um, no, we've gone multiple. A, oh, no, it's multiple. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I suppose it's a, a decent map for AT guns. I'm not convinced it's the best choice. And fuel wise, he's now getting the M8 out. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I think going for Chaffee, if you're going to go into multiple, is fine at this point. But I would have just liked to have seen him save the fuel and go straight into Sherman's. He has had pretty good map control so far uh, and he's going to cap his fuel back on the bottom side again although that might be the <laughs> same problem <laughs> as last game again this this crunch is going and capping the bot side fuel like in both games so far <laughs> it's so funny it's just so irritating as well because it's just you pull all of your units move away and then you yeah. can see like the, the entirety of Jibba's units just moving to the bot side of the map now <laughs> The DAC are very much like a Zerg-like army, aren't they? You think you've conquered them in one area and they just blob over to another area of the map. It's difficult. And they can move so much faster than a lot of other factions as well. They can. All their vehicles are super, super fast. I just want to fast forward into two years' time because this, these fundamentals of this strategy game could end up being excellent. You know what I mean? But especially with these bigger maps we're seeing in 1v1 as well. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly geared up quite nicely. I do like Dak, I just think they had a rough start with some of the abilities and the overpoweredness. Are you, smoke, are you smoking in here? Some, some copium again. <laughs> you done me there, son. You done me there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good foil for me, though, because I certainly am a coper, definitely. Uh, someone's got to be. We've got to keep, got to keep the hope up. Um, but this is a nice push-off here by... Uh, Jibber, he's managed to re-secure the mid pretty well. He's going to get the cutoff. There's not really much that uh, Ooh, Orange Pest can do about this. No, and there we go, the kill from the M8, but the vehicle's still moving. There we go, taking out. Momentum took over for a second. He's also getting the cutoff, neutralised, and he gets the retreat away. Meanwhile, M16's now got six kills, not too shabby. Eight red, meanwhile, only got the one. Yeah, that eight red hasn't really found much value so far. Um, which is unfortunate. Uh, more ground going to be taken on the bot side in the meanwhile. Um, this is just really nice, solid play from Jibber right now. He's just kind of playing it slowly until he brings out Sherman's, I, I, I expect, at this point. Yeah, he's kind of playing by numbers, isn't he? He's actually going for Browning's the though instead, yeah. He's going to get the bar upgrade. Yep. I'm surprised. Uh, I guess Germans he hasn't really... into a bar and let's see what happens. Ooh, this could be nasty for it the... Be really Really nasty. <laughs> Taylor's oh, oldest no. time. He oh, why is he getting the building? He no, thought he, he could get the DPS clicked. through the window. He thought he could escape the M16, but it was a bad choice all in all. Oh, he could have killed the captain. He could have killed the captain, but he clicked the building. Oh, no. Do you think that's what he did? Yeah, I think he misclicked the building there, 100%. Let's hope so. Because it was a bad miscalculation otherwise, so yeah, let's hope so. Enemy movement. <laughs> Hey, Red now coming into the bottom side with the 
scout squad trying to smoke themselves off, but not getting into the smoke. Very odd smoke placement because he's not going to be able <laughs> He's had to run. commute to the smoke and he suffered so much <laughs> health damage as a result. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in base, the captain that is somehow still alive is back for more. But Orange Pest has clearly capped up so much of the map whilst this has been happening. And he now has the M1340 on the field, mm. the uh, Carrot Tomato. The, the timing on the Sherman is so late because of the investment in the M8 that did nothing. And he's going for a second M8. Wait, what? You're Why? kidding me. Are we, are we watching the series that we watched earlier? Is it April Fool's Day M8s today? We've had... Two times double M8s today, and they've neither game has made any sense. Is there any top level players in chat that can explain to mid level players Vulcan and A why double M8 works against Dak? Because I'm just not convinced. Just chaffies. If you're going to do it, just do chaffies. Because M8s are just as bad against infantry as the chaffies are anyway. Always going oh. in for the crowd shot. So who can he get away? Oh, there it is. The Karamoto tags in for him. Could get that the kill. A very dead M8 now. He doesn't care about the rear armor. He's like, have, 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 have my cheeks. I'm gonna take you out. Oh, <laughs> somehow survived, and here comes the other one. Oh, here comes the other one. We're fools. We don't know what we're on about. Can he kill the Caro? I don't think he can. <laughs> the pants are no. Oh no. Oh, it's. Oh no. Oh no. This is why you don't take M8s, guys. Uh, disappointed. Azilagath has some cope in chat for us. The Chaffee's just mares and that good versus armor and useless versus infantry. Okay. Where is the, uh, explains why he doesn't go Chaffee, but why does he go for motor pool and M8? Why do you go motor pool at all, actually? Yeah, why would you go motor pool? Motor you just go straight into tank depot. He was ahead enough that he could have just waited. Hmm. <clears throat> just tank depot is the choice. Motor pool. He does. Oh, really nice actually for Orange Pass. He's got double Jaegers, Panzer Jaegers now. That's really scary. <laughs> Those AT guns are still busted. You know, like the boys got nerfed. Mm. The Panzer Jaeger, um, Panzer Boxer never got nerfed. So it's still really strong. Mm. Not many things got nerfed, to be honest. It was like five things in total. Which is fair enough. I mean, I don't want to see too many nerfs and buffs at an early stage because, quite frankly, who knows what they're doing. But... Yeah. Like if he can get three, he can just start one tapping M8s and and this M16. I'm is that the M16 died right, and then he replaced it. Mm, seems so. Or, is, or did it not die? Did it am I, die? Am I, am I am I tripping? Are you tripping? Did it die? It has six infantry kills. You're tripping, bro. I'm tripping. I'm mm. tripping. I'm thinking of the other. I game. might be uh, <laughs> smoking copium, but you're clearly smoking something else. I don't know. I don't want to know what you're on. It's a PG-13 stream. Oh no, the Panzerjäger ambush. They're they're hidden in the. Oh, crater. there they there are. They uncloak. Call an ambulance, but not for me. That was a shame that the uh, the half track had to back up there because that could have been a very dead M8. Breaches him out of the building. Can you just trade breaches and keep breaching each other? Yeah, you can. I definitely did a dance for someone the other day where I was just running in and out of buildings. <laughs> it was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> the only trouble is that some, some breaches cost that munitions, I'm pretty sure. More than likely. So, it can be a complete waste. Going for another bazooka squad. This game's stable still, it's insane. It's just the strength of bazookas and the boss. He's going to try and outfight the DAC infantry army I... and uh, hope to not bleed too much to the DAC vehicle army. It's basically yeah. the meta of Co3 right now. These rifles need to continue to find value and manpower bleed DAC so that DAC can't build up enough vehicles. Otherwise, it's just going to get out of hand. Why does it do that? I don't know. We do have a Chaffee in the build, by the way. You'll be pleased to know. I went over to the DAC army and that's how I found out. Um, <laughs> bazookas find out the 8 rap, but they smoke themselves out of danger. Not a bad choice. Can't fire through the smoke. It's not going to be... Much. So it starts with Veteran C1. I wonder what they could do here. They could do flanking speed, perhaps? Or seek and destroy. 
I usually, if I'm going double chaffy, would like to go like go one of each, have one else you can destroy, so you can kind of see what you're, you're going for, and then you can send the one in that has the ability to flank while the other one stays at the front. Um, it's kind of a nice combo, but it, the chaffy here is pretty late. That's kind of kind of weird. It's getting to the point where you you really want to just. I mean, it's too late having bought another chaffy, but wait for the tank depot. Play around your infantry on the map. I mean, even invest into like nade upgrades, right? And play around uh, munitions because the sticky bomb can be pretty great with these vehicles to chip or point. get snares, and then you just run them down. Because whilst Dak is fast and maneuverable, if you take that maneuverability away from them, you can definitely exploit it. Got a bit of um, infantry. Artillery support there. Captain forced away by the LMG. Couldn't withstand oh. the barrage for much longer. Meanwhile, 8 Rad clearing up the Americans in the north. It seems that Orange Pest is amounting a decent victory point haul at the moment. And the Bazooka Squad's going to have to push forward and try and cap Chaffee M16. A hard front in the center. But he's just outcompeted by the damage. And there we go, we've got Morda 3 as well. It seems that uh, Jibbers. Good news. No, it's not good news. Armada is the perfect counter to all of these multiple units. It really, really is. The M16, the Chaffee, both going to die very quickly. Oh, and the M8. One shot from the Marder, one shot from the Karamata, and it's just dead. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, he had the two Panzerbushes coming in oh, from the north the side as well. So, yeah. It was all the damage on the Chaffee. Oh, from the Panzerbuchsers. That was just the Panzerbuchsers alone. Is it Buxer or Boucher? Buxer. Is it? Thank you. Okay, I'll take I'll take your word for it. You seem well read. All right, the Shafi is getting brutalized by the Buxers, and it's very much dead. It's a Roman candle to the tank it oh. once was. Oh, we got the stun grenade oh, the on. Panzer Pioneer kill. It's yeah. actually pretty pretty nice, but maybe not as nice as losing a Shafi. Mm. That is rough. Also, these Assault Pioneers, I feel like, haven't done too much this game that he first brought in. I would think I would rather have three Panzerjägers right now than the Assault Pioneers. I'm very curious, by the way. I'm, I'm assuming two Dak wins in a row, by the way, but I'm very curious as to the third map they may have up their sleeves if we go to a deciding ace game. Because it could be very interesting. At the full map pool, every map plays very differently. So although we're clearly seeing that both players are... Very, very uh, powerful at the Deutsche Afrika Court. It may not ne necessarily be the same dynamic in Game 3. Uh, can't count Jibber out, though, can we, Vulcan? Because we all saw what Jibber did in that first game. He may have a pretty weak composition right now, but it looked like he had a similarly weak composition in Game 1, and we saw how that happened. I mean, he might finally be waiting to get the tank depot by the looks of things, as he's up to almost 100 fuel. But... It's just so late. Like, it really, really is. And as and the longer that you wait against Dak, and you're not and you're not trading well as well, because he's lost like his M8s. He's lost two M8s and he's lost a Chaffee. Let's not forget. No. Whilst Orange Pest has basically lost no vehicles. So there is a huge disparity on this map right now. It's massive. It's massive. It's all but over. Bro. As always, I will never ever recommend people jump ahead in the YouTube video or in go for a small nap in live Twitch land because comebacks are very possible in Company of Heroes. And right mm -hmm. now, we do have Orange Pest overextending, possibly. There are bazookas waiting. The M16 could be very dead if he's not careful. Oh, he gets him regardless. This could be game. Yeah. That was the perfect amount of commitment from our Orange Pest there. Really nicely done. Just to make sure he finishes that off without overextending into the bazookas. And that's just another one of those vehicles going down. And uh, Jibba, like, he can't... <laughs> the worst part now is, like, he has the fuel that he's waiting for the tank depot, I expect. But then when he builds the tank depot, he's not going to have fuel to build Sherman anyway, so... Because he's going to lose the entire map. So it's just... It's just, yes, yeah, long, it's long, long, long gone, I think. But triple cap. Um, we're probably going to see the cutoff put under pressure soon. The Panzergens there, or Panzergens, sorry, trying to hold the line. It's not like I think in the, in, it's in the replay they get from G, right? Mm. Yeah. Oh, assault gren grenades there from assault grenadiers. 
Um, to be honest, it's not like we didn't know Motopool kind of sucked for USF before this game, Vulcan. That was common mm. knowledge, I thought, so I'm incredibly surprised how this game played out and how... Chipper's, and Chipper's early game was really good. Like, yeah. he played it pretty much perfectly. He spread out the rifles just as he needed to. And... Wait, did he just bring in the M8? Or is that no, so it's you, the you Easy 8. There you yeah, go. The it's got eight, the yeah. Easy 8 with the rifleman on board. The combat group, that was the most powerful thing in beta. Um, or alpha or pre-alpha or tech test or whatever they want to call it. Maybe this is the Coming beta. Jeez. <laughs> the thing is rolling forwards really fast. It really like is. You. Look at it zoom. Look at it go. There you go. All the way and from no Detroit, damage. Michigan. Now fighting in Tunisia. You know, I just realized something. All this time that we've been waiting, Orange Pass has just been sitting on his upgrades. And the, just, do you see how tanky that M13 was right then? With yeah. his HP upgrades? He's got all of it. He's got everything. He's penetrating the frontal armor of this call-in tank. That's meant to be an uber late game call-in vehicle. 8 CP, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the three vet Kara Amata. He can just pop the uh, 45 munition pen and then probably just fight that 1v1. Sherman Marta, wants though. it though. Sherman wants it, but there's Marder Ooh. in support. And that's a oh, side no. hit. This is going to go down possibly to the Kara. There it is. He gets the kill. Vet 3 for the win. He's got infantry to repair. He can repair himself anyway. And that is indeed GG. all over. GG.
have to act if we want to live in a different world. Hello there, and let there be code three, around about, come on, there we go. Now, as we are in the deciding ace game of this semi-final for the second tournament of the first season for the Master League for Company of Heroes, that's right, three, and we're looking at Jibber Jabber Jobbers, United States Forces. I'm here with Vulcan, I'm seeing if he's still paying attention. Who do we see yeah, in the I'm north, Brent. Vulcan? We've got Orange Best playing with that. There we go. He's still on board, everybody. We haven't lost him quite yet. We haven't lost him quite yet. He's been a tour de force today, helping out with the casting for this uh, day one of this tournament. And we're now in the deciding ace game. This will decide who goes through to the grand final, um, played next Saturday. I've been really, really enjoying these casts today. There's been some, some cracking games. It's good to see the new meta coming to light without any of the exploits involved. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be seeing only a single engineer at the start from the British player, Jibber, going for double rifle section out of the game. Can we blow it up now? An there we go. And uh, it's very much the British forces oh, instead of the one I announced, but regardless. Let's see if we've got any um, commander choices. Yes, we do. Italian combined arms battle group. Who would have suspected we'd have that for... Uh, the Swede, Orange Pest from the north. First time we've seen Twin Beaches today. This is uh, one of probably the two best maps in the game. Yeah, big fan of this map. I like it a lot. This crowd should some though. <laughs> playing with fire. Definitely playing with fire a lot there. Uh, a couple of extra hits on target. That would have been dead. Mm. Um, but that fuel not getting capped. Uh, he's going to let that decap. Um, this is actually a really good tip for newer players as well. Is if instead of like standing in the cap, it auto decaps back to yes, neutral if your yes. opponent doesn't cap it. So there's no point in standing there. Um, he is just going to keep hunt hunting down. And if Orange Pest is not paying attention, which I very much expect he is, he might have been able to catch that Crad Schutzen, but went to check anyway. But he didn't time it as beautifully as we would have liked. If he would timed it beautifully, he would be capping that bite now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kratschutzen, yep, yeah, got into danger yet again. But the Berzglieris are here now, so this may not work out that well for Jibber all in all. Orange Pest is testing Jibber's limits here. He's teasing him with the Kratschutzen, trying to distract him, allowing the Italian infantry to get close and personal. 
with those Brits. Oh, you can see as soon as he selected them all there and right clicked the Basiglietti because they disintegrated. What he needs right now is one of these to have a flame thrower, one of these Panzer Pioneers that he's invested into three squads of at the start here. He has indeed. They're best at long distance though. They're not close quarter combat like most worker units in Company Heroes history. These guys are long distance and uh, it's just showing because Jib has done so well with his start here. No one's had this plus 10, but he's finally going to capture it. That was huge trades. Absolutely huge trades early on. And that bled so much manpower from Orange Pest at the start. The only thing that Orange Pest has going for him is that he had captured, I think, slightly more sectors in the second few. So, yeah, that was rough, though. Yeah, I mean, he had his own plus 10, uh, but Jib has bled some manpower there, so it's not all... It's not the best start of all time like we possibly intimated because, of course, you know, at least uh, Orange Pest had his own fuel, I suppose. Now, this is a very oppressive garrison positioning. It gives you great lines of sight, and uh, he just gets a brief vision of where his opponent Orange Pest is at. Well, Orange Pest is over here, and he may be running straight into this mine. Let's see how many models that can take to go down. That's a good chunk in that is. And a lot of health off that entire squad. That was a pretty brutal mine, actually. It was. It was. Those guys are never going to be the same again until they're replenished in about five minutes time. But the fighting combat availability is really not good now. They're reduced to capping. And uh, we do now have the Panzer Pioneer with its flamethrower. A little bit late to the party and out of position and out of luck. So forced back to base. Yeah, the flamethrower makes those Panzer Pioneers like 10 times more viable in any form of combat. Like, flamethrowers are just one of those things that you give it to a unit and it will 1v1 anything. Very, yeah. Very nice. Flamethrowers, of course, available for all four factions in Co3 and they're very powerful. I'm not going to say overpowered, I just think maybe they should be a bit more expensive. They're very powerful and they're a huge feature of the game at this point in time. You want to get them as many of them and as quickly as possible. Is underway, so it looks like these rifles are falling back to the heavy cover so they, they can trade against the Crutches. And, um, we have the rifles actually pushing up in the mid. If they can force back this flamethrower squad again, <laughs> that would be really, really bad of Orange Pest because he's losing a lot of map control to these multiple rifle squads out of the start. Heavy cover, though, does work wonders. Meanwhile, Crutches is clapping in the south. Uh, but he's just going to brute force them. Infantry training's been completed. So that gives increased accuracy, damage, reduced reload times, and makes units harder to hit. That's 30 fuel, 200 manpower. Meaning these uh, infantry section are going to be way more dangerous. Yeah, so instead of waiting for the second field engineer, he's just gone into the four rifle squads into the upgrade immediately and so far he's actually used it very well to trade and push his opponent off so it has paid off so far uh, although he will be a little bit later on his vehicles Loads of tapping being done a fifth infantry section arriving for jibber back in base we have no sign of the ambulance yet but look at this we're getting the support armor elements giving us stug d's um, already, so clear that Orange Pest, who has an unbeaten... Somebody go find Orange Pest's unbeaten streak for me. Go to co3stats.com and uh, go to the DAC 1v1 ladder. Just go check for me uh, Orange Pest's uh, win streak is DAC. I think it's the highest ELO in the game, and I'm pretty sure he has an insane win streak. If you go get that information for me, I'd appreciate it. But look at this capping there. Look at that. Four infantry squads all capping in unison. Unfortunately, Orange Pest's streak has been broken. On it's the been broken! Oh, no! It was 36 before it got broken. Okay, it got broken recently. Maybe his spirit's been broken as well. Yeah, he's not, not doing too shabby or too too good right now. It's uh, really looking rough. The first boy's AT upgrade coming out for the infantry section. Looks like he was pretty light on munitions for a while because we didn't see that upgraded for a long time. He might have also delayed it on purpose. Uh, just so that he can trade better with the rifles early on. Oh dear, apparently it got broken today, his win streak got broken today, so that must be demoralizing heading into this um, this tournament series. So his warm-up games didn't go that Come well, on, apparently, losing his uh, prized DAC win streak. 
So the double Muni that he's managed to hold on the top side, Orange Best, is now going to get broken down by Jibber's rifles. We got the double boys AT in position now as well. So first light vehicle is coming out. It's going to be under threat. We are going up to six rifle squads. <laughs> Incredible. That's very well. The Great Wall got released this week by Petroglath or whatever the bloody developer's name is. Um, so yeah, it, it makes sense that we've got Battle of the Somme esque infantry tactics. <laughs> if he gets an, enough boys AT, he can maybe just kill the stick straight up. He won't have to care, he just has to keep them spread out. And look at that. This is why I'm not a big fan of the stroke three, because its projectile is so slow. <laughs> you can just run away from it. You don't have to care. Certainly can. Orange Pest just being... He's just lost out in terms of... I hate to say it, Orange Pest, if you watch this, ta if you watch this cast back, but in terms of tactics and micromanagement... I'm not saying that his APM wasn't high enough, I'm just saying like his timing on the infantry battles. He got outplayed in this game so far by Jibber. He just overcommitted into the infantry engagement early on and it really cost him massively. Um, because it's allowed Jibber to just save all this manpower that he's now using and abusing with all these rifle squads. He's actually going into a seventh rifles now. What? Angry Dutchman oh, eat your side shots. Yeah. We go. Oh. Parting shot from damage. this retreating squad as well. He just got a sneaky shot off with the boys and then retreated. Oh no. Don't repair it there. <laughs> those boys AT rifles will ruin those Panzer Pioneers. Oh, this is, this is, this really is awesome. Awesome. He's gone for another one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> it would be. See if we go, go up to eight. <laughs> we the chat demands it. Vulcan demands it. We're gonna get eight this game. Seven, not enough. Seven, not enough. We have four boys AT upgrades so far. So any vehicle is gonna be very scared on this map. <laughs> and the thing is, the Stug three is supposed to be the counter. Nice nade there. Yeah. Very nice nade. Stug's coming in. Could get him on retreat here. This could be. Oh, he missed, however. And now he may fall prey to the boys' AT. Oh, no. Get out of there. So, How's that? So rear, hits, hits? rear hits coming in. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. That's supposed to be the counter, guys. Just saying. The, I don't know what he does now. Well, because it need, um, he needs to, he needs to get the one vet on it, right, to, for it to actually yeah, be useful. Yeah. And that's the trouble. Is it got killed too early? It didn't get enough damage to that. Uh, genuinely, uh, I'm just thinking outside the box here. Maybe get two MG34s. I know that sounds laughable. You're probably going to be up against a Crusader soon or a Humber or whatever. Yeah, don't listen to me ever if you can help it. What's his anti tank if he does that? Get an MG though, surely. That's what worked in the First World War, <laughs> when the German... MG would be okay, for sure. We're up to... Oh my gosh. That is six boys AT squads. Oh no. The trades early on just made this absolutely brutal, because usually what would happen is the Brit player wouldn't get so far ahead that they can spend this much manpower on rifle squads. Yeah. And, and then you'd have an 8-rat out. And then yeah. it would start putting pressure on the map, and and you, but in this map, Jibber has just like grabbed it and never let go. Yeah, exactly. That that's bang on. Coming to Heroes Three is more snowbally than Coming to Heroes Two. If you mess up your first infantry engagements, the game doesn't suddenly give you more manpower uh, income per minute as much as it didn't go to. It's not as rubber bandy, but that demands really good tuning and balance. So we're gonna have to wait for the game to slowly become more of a, a strategic conundrum as the Kratschutzen leads the way for the Stug here. Yeah, so Jibba, he was holding his CPs. He just finally decided to go Indian infantry and get the upgrade so that he can make his rifles more efficient, which he needs to do with this many of them. Um, and he's probably just going to go straight into Crusaders, I would assume, as he has just built his Tech 4, I think. You would be right. There is the company command post. Okay, the whiplashing of the the tent ropes as we speak. So let's go check out Orange Pest's army. He is the best uh, auto match yellow player in the game, apparently. 
He's now gone for quite a decent anti-infantry accompaniment. He's got two Bezgliaris with the upgrades and Assault Grenadiers. He's also got two Flamethrower squads. So maybe he can hold the line here, Vulcan, with his anti-infantry power. He just now has to worry about the Crusaders imminent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the lineup of infantry that Orange Pest has is good enough if it's played well. Um, if it, I think I think he needs even a third flamethrower on his third Panzer Pioneer, uh, and he can literally run on run run towards these uh, rifles because they won't do as much damage against the infantry as he will do to them if he gets a flamethrower on target. So uh, then he can keep pressure up with the Stug until it does enough damage to get. Uh, one, like the one bet, and then from there, things really start to get a bit scary actually for Jibber until he gets armor out. <laughs> Talking scary when those Italians are sprinting at you, it's uh, more mm -hmm. than reason enough to get out of there, and indeed he did. Let's quickly check out Orange Pest's uh, progress on the Italian combined arms there. Yep, he's just got on the full left side as we have come to expect in this game. Jerry has 300 points. The boys are taking a position of power there. We're seeing the Crusader getting built, mm. so it's on its way. We're seeing a Kradschutzen, is that? Oh, no, it's a second Stug. Yes, indeed it is. He's just doubling down. He reckons this is the counter. We were... Well, of course, if they don't die... They... I think it is. Yeah. It, it still is. It, it's just... The trouble is... He didn't. He played. He played it too aggressively before he had a second one. Because mm. for seven rifle squads, you need two stucks, right? Yeah. Whereas with four rifle squads, which you'd probably normally see, one is enough. Um, but yeah, the Crusader's on the field now. So if it gets a six pounder upgrade, those stucks will be hurting. I almost feel as though in the psychology of this game, Jibber baited Orange Best into over committing as we see a squad oh, gone somewhere yeah. there. We've got a nice flank coming in from the Crusader. What a hit from the Crusader! That was a four-man hit there. He's now going for the Stug. This could be the series. This could be Jibber hurtling towards a grand final appearance in the first season of the ML. He'll be very happy with his performance here. Stug down. He blobbed himself into existence, it would seem. That was beautiful. Yeah, the uh, Panzer Pioneers there getting caught out while trying to repair the Stug and took so much damage. And then the Stug going down as well. The upgrade, like mid attack as well. <laughs> the six pounder upgrade wasn't even there when he started firing. Um, and that was that was crazy. Yeah, and now we're back down to the same problem as before where he's got one Stug for seven rifles. Only 250 points remaining. That build versus uh, this build. Oh, by the way, these guys are in trouble. They're just... Go no, he's going to be fine. Looks like he did lose a rifle squad. Yes, there was an infantry section that did yeah. die just before that big engagement then. Um, just, I think on the north side of the map where the camera wasn't, basically. The Crusader getting into a really funky spot. Not quite sure where it's going. It's just driving off to the top left of the map. <laughs> um, oh, we now have a call in. What is that? Is that going to be a Panzer Jäger on the side of that? Another Crusader coming in. And we got the, uh, the M1340. And the Stug in combination. It just doesn't feel like enough, does it? When you're up against this many mm. boys AT. A15 the trouble, if he doesn't have upgrades, which I would expect he doesn't, just because of the manpower bleed in this game. Um, like, those five boys AT squads that are on the field right now can literally one shot that in 13. If they were all in the same spot. Yeah, exactly. The carrier just doesn't uh, protect itself that well against the boys AT. And indeed, the Crusaders are on the march. Oh. Oh, Who needs no. boys AT when you've got six pounder crusaders just running through the lines here? They can't do anything, and that M13 probably no. going to go down the stick. Surely soon to follow. There's no mines as well to protect. He's just not been able to solidify himself in this oh. game, and then again repairing Panzer Pioneers. Absolutely devastated, annihilated, and wasted across the battlefield there. As we see Jibber put the exclamation point on the mark and finalise this game. That is brutal. He's just going to run into the base now, kill the med truck, and <laughs> there is nothing here to stop him. Oh dear. At all. Oh, the little There's ambulance. No this is how it's done. I always hate to see it when the DAC player doesn't bring in Panzer Eggers, but I just think they're so good. They're such good value. Oh. 
God, the commander really cracks me up for Brits. He's like, this is how it's done. <laughs> I wish I could hear it. <laughs> GG, well played, guys. This is how it's done. <laughs> Bosch on the run. <laughs> well played to Orange Pest. Good series. Well played to Jibba finding himself in his first grand final for a really long time. I think his first grand final in a Master League tournament, I want to say. He's done really well. He's been so committed to the competitive scene for the past three or four years. And he really deserves to be making the progress he's made. So well played to Jibba. Let's see how he does next Saturday um, as the Master League rolls on. So uh, everybody thank uh, Vulcan for a fantastic debut into Company Heroes tournament casting today. It felt like he was a grizzled veteran. Um, so big thanks to you, sir. Um, let's go and... Oh, yeah, go check out his uh, YouTube channel. But he will be streaming after this, so I, I would advise you to stick around. Uh, big thanks to the admins as well. Um, today helping was Stern Panther and Sidewinder. Big thanks to that. Um, let's go check out the brackets now and unveil how the... Uh, oh, it was indeed Orange Pest is against Elpern next Saturday, which should be a great grand final. Ooh. We've also got a third place battle between Enka and Orange Pest. Meanwhile, Nagano has, uh, after losing his first series, he's already proving his worth. He beat Momo for show. Uh, we've got Faraji versus Xfiddy. Xfiddy, of course, trained by Orange Pest. We've got Bart and Hulk Smash. Um, still waiting for one of these series. Uh, don't know. How, I think that's just meant to be Theodosios goes through there. Ah, we're waiting for one of the ones down here. Pravati and Captain Link hasn't finished. That might be because it's really late in Taiwan. Maybe the admins took pity on him and have allowed this game to be played at another time. Maybe Pravati agreed. I do know Taiwan. I think the time's like four o'clock in the morning, so I can completely understand if that's the case. And down, where's the Noob Nath? Oh, Hulk Smash beat Noob Nath. I'm so sorry to declare there, Vulcan. Oh, you, you, your 2v2 teammate's been beaten there, but he, he will... Got, he got wrecked by the double M8. <laughs> Most likely the double M8 <laughs> came <laughs> good, finally. So Intermediate <laughs> Nath is back to being Noob Nath again. Um, he will find himself up against the best Chinese player in the world, Happy Cat, next Saturday in a best of five. So that's right, guys. Next Saturday, it's going to be best of fives with Battle Group Terminator, meaning they can't play the same battle group more than once. Should be spicy. So, yeah, go go check out uh, Vulcan. If you've loaded up your stream, Vulcan, I'm ready to do the raid or the host or whatever you want. Oh, yeah. One second. Is it the same Twitch channel as your YouTube name? It is indeed. Vulcan 720p gaming. Okay. Of course. Have you enjoyed Vulcan's services today, guys? He's been a good co-caster. You want to see him again one day? Can't be next Saturday. He's getting absolutely smashed in Cardiff, apparently. <laughs> Just like picking yeah. up. <laughs> I am. I think I have to drop off your stream before I can start mine because it's been funky with my graphics card. No problemo. Um, let's uh, get ready for you to raid. You, you... Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> Thank See you, you guys. Bye-bye. So that was Vulcan. We'll get ready with the raid for him. I think he was a very knowledgeable uh, co-caster. I think he did well. Amazing what you can pick up when your uh, profession is literally RTS casting of the World War variety. So yeah, we'll get ready with the big boy raid on Vulcan. When he's ready, that is. So, uh, I'm sure he'll intimate when he's ready. Let's go check out his channel. Big thanks for being here today, guys. I know that the hype for Co3 period um, has come to an end, and we're now just in the meat of the battle um, in terms of like waiting for them to make the game slowly better. <laughs> it's, uh, look at this. He's got a really self deprecating uh, face image on everything. <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine Vulcan and everything. That's so funny. No problem, Botanic. It says he's live, so we'll go with that. Let's go for the raid then. Raid has been created. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed your stay. See you next Saturday. I might do some um, some casting tomorrow. I don't know. It depends what I'm doing with my in my real life and stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, dudes.
let's uh, raid on over to Vulcan. Cheers.